you hear that music, folks? It says, don't stop the party. Well, we can't start the party until somebody wins game three. This is VibeFortBend.com, and today is the end of the road for either Seven Lakes or the Fort Bend Travis Tigers as they play game three of a bi-district playoff series. I'm Roger Smith. Glad you're with us. We thought we weren't going to get a good window of nice weather, and we're still not sure if we'll get a... Um, a window that's open long enough, if you know what I mean. But we're about to start at high noon from Cy Woods, which, by the way, I want to thank all the folks at Cy Fair ISD and the Cy Woods staff. It's a beautiful place to play. We're just glad it was available. These same two teams were on the field, and Travis was in a must-win game. They had lost game one, three to nothing. And so they had to win on Friday night to stay alive, and they did just that. Ariel Kovalewski led off and she went one for one and she walked a couple of times. Then you had Kennedy Clark who went one for three and drove in a run. She also drew a walk on top of that. Maddie Morris one for two on the night. Rachel Ibarra didn't get a hit offensively but pitching she did great and she pitched a complete game seven innings 96 pitches thrown nearly 70 in fact rounded up and it's 70 percent of them for strikes only four hits allowed and a couple of them were very very weak contact just one earned run and she struck out nine on the way to the victory lauren garza was one for three and lauren hit a home run it put travis ahead one to nothing in the bottom of the second in the top of the third seven lakes tied it right up but then in the bottom of the fourth fort ben travis scored one more time and it could have been a much more uh, one-sided game than two to one for Travis, but they left 10 runners on base during the course of the game. For Seven Lakes, they can always count on their leadoff player, Mackenzie Stutz, the shortstop. She was one for two and scored a run, also drew a walk. Amy Abke was the starting pitcher and she took the loss even though she pitched beautifully six innings 119 pitches, 59% strikes, only five hits allowed, and the two runs. She struck out six along the way. Amy Abke with the bat was pretty good. One for two, and she drove in the only run for the Seven Lakes Spartans. Seven Lakes didn't get any extra base hits last night, but for Travis, it was Garza with the homer, and Kennedy Clark had a double. You know, when we started the pregame introduction to this, it was very sunny. I was feeling really, really good, but all of a sudden, it's a lot cloudier than it was before. You know, this VibeFortBend.com presentation of Fort Bend County softball playoffs is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity is a proud supporter of Fort Bend and Greater Houston High School sports on VibeFortBend.com. And with the new Xfinity Sport Zone app, watch multiple games at once and check live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the spring. First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. All four of those locations are open on Saturdays. You know, you might want to go over and get your car serviced and sit in the lobby and listen to this ball game on your phone. It would be a great day to do it. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. The head coaches are meeting at home plate with the three umpires, which they upgrade from a two umpire crew to a crew of three when you get into the first round of the playoffs. And if you win a couple more rounds, then you will have strictly crews of four umpires. We'll be right back at Cy Woods and get this underway. Travis will bat first because they are the visiting team. We'll be right back. This is VibeFortBend.com. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid or two kids or three kids, especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. 
So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. We want to thank Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland for helping us take care of business all year long. Here we go with the first pitch from Amy Abke of Seven Lakes. And it is high as she delivers it to the straw that stirs the drink, Aria Kowalewski, sophomore third base player. Pitch on the way, and that is powered to left field, and that will get down over the head of Megan Kelly. In fact, it's gone! It will get down beyond the fence. On the very first at bat of the ball game, AK-47 hits a kill shot. Wow! Well, I guess she announced her presence with authority there. Oh, wow. It's been a long time since I've seen one of those. I guess uh, maybe when uh, George Springer, thank you, sir. I just now got the lineup for Seven Lakes. How about that? I didn't even get one for Travis, but I knew Kowalewski was going to bat first. And I also know that Riley Westmoreland bat second for Travis. Fans had just settled into their seats. Westmoreland, little tapper, right back to Abke. She scoops it and throws over to first base where Raby is waiting. And that's the first out. Amy Abke pitching, Emma Wingate at catcher. At first base, it's Becca Raby. Cameron Wallman is at second. Mackenzie Stutz at shortstop and Ashley Abel at third base. First pitch to Kennedy Clark is ball one. Third straight left-handed batter to start off the lineup for Travis. And she takes the second pitch in there for a strike one and one. Clark was one for three and drove in one of the two Tiger runs last night when they won game two. And if they hadn't, then they wouldn't be playing here today. Abke brings it. 
Clark takes a strike on the outside corner. There's a wind blowing out a little bit to left and it helped Kovalewski's homer, but it didn't make all the difference. She just got a hold of that one and hit it the other way. I mean, an opposite field homer. And they have a tall fence here at Cy Woods. Two and two, the count on Clark, who bats barehanded. Pop up, straight up. It's the catcher, Wingate, calling for it. And she makes the catch in fair territory. Actually, uh, Ashley Abel makes the catch. You know, they were standing right there hip to hip. And Abel uh, is bigger, so she kind of pushed uh, <laughs> her little catcher out of the way. But that's the second out. Abke rocks and fires. That's a strike on the outside corner. Maddie Morris, the second base player, swings and misses at a changeup, and she's down 0-2. Now we've gone from clouds to sun. Here comes the sun. It's all right. The pitch way outside, and Maddie lays off. Open stance from the right-handed box. Pitch on the way. Just got a piece, and it ricochets off the backstop. No numbers on the fence to tell us the exact dimensions of this ball field here at Cy Woods, but it's just a thing of beauty. They have field turf. It's impervious to bad weather. There's another good rip by Morris, and she fouls it straight back again. Emily Johnson is in center field and playing straight away on Morris. And there's a pop up and it reaches near the top of the backstop, but does not get over it. The count's one and two. Here's the pitch. Just missed the outside corner. The Travis fans really happy with uh, a wise take on the part of Maddie Morris. And that one's high, and the count goes full. Morris in the back of the box. Seven Lakes comes in 11 and 13 on the season, and there's a strikeout for Abke to end the first, but Travis breaks out on top with the home run by Kowalewski, and we'll be right back with the bottom of the first on VipeFortBend.com. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. True confessions. As soon as I saw the ball come off of the bat of Ariel Kowalewski in the first inning, I saw that their left fielder, Megan Kelly, turned around and ran. And I was thinking, that's over her head. 
and it'll get down. But I underestimated the power of Kowalewski. It did get down, but not before it flew over the fence. Amy Abke leads off for Seven Lakes. Amy last night one for two and drove in the only Seven Lakes run. So the fourth seed out of District 196A, the Seven Lakes Spartans have been giving the Travis Tigers fits. Travis tied for the lead in District 26A with George Ranch. And I'm not sure exactly what the tiebreaker was because the two teams split in the playoffs or in the regular season. The Tigers, the top seed. And that one is in the air and deep. That is gone. This game is tied as Amy Abke says, anything you can do, I can do just as well. And it looks like maybe I underestimated the wind blowing out to left field. But as soon as that came off the bat, you know, I kind of learned from the read on Kowalewski's bomb and Amy Abke, well, she has tied it up in a most abrupt way. Impressive. Next up, it's Mackenzie Stutz, who last night was batting leadoff. First pitch to her is down and in for a ball. I guess it's a good move on the part of Katie Spencer, head coach of Seven Lakes, to go with Abke. I mean, it sure looks like a good move right now. Stutz, check swing, but it's a called strike. Stutz is, you know, kind of like Jose Altuve. She's little, but she is powerful. Takes a strike on the outside corner. The count's one and two. Usually I bring you a weather report and I include the temperature, but it seems like it's just fluctuating. The sun has come out. It's warm right now. Stutz check swing and that goes foul and hits about 45, eight, uh, 45 feet up the backstop on the first base side. Travis was the home team last night. Today they are the visitors. In this game three, winner moves on and the loser is finished for the season. Here's a pitch that bounces in and there's no chase by Stutz. She's near the front of the box. Wears the white shoes. Started to go, left it alone and the count goes full three and two. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first. Each team has hit a solo homer. Ariel Kowalewski for Travis and Amy Abke for Seven Lakes. And there's another foul out of play on the right side. Seems like we have about as many fans in the stands for both schools as we did last night. I'm surprised and thankful that we're getting a window of good weather to at least start this game. Rachel Ibarra has pitched every inning of this series. And that one's up in the air, but it will hang up and come down to the left fielder. That's Westmoreland. She's got it. And that's out number one. Now Megan Kelly, the left fielder for Seven Lakes, will bat. Here's the pitch from Rachel Ibarra, and it's outside for a ball. Pitch on the way, fouled, sliced into the net on the right side. Kelly was one for three last night, had one of the four hits by the Spartans. She was in the nine spot last night, today in the middle of the order, and she takes a strike. 
one and two. Kelly right up on the front of the batter's box. Swung on and missed. She goes down. Ibarra got her with the changeup. That's out number two. Now, Ashley Abel, who plays third base. Ashley one for three. A lot of players for Seven Lakes went one for three last night. Pitch on the way, popped up, and it almost climbed over the backstop. She looks down in the third base box at head coach Katie Spencer. She looks at a pitch that bounces, bounces in, not only bounces in, but was in the middle of the opposite batter's box. The outfielders are playing her straight away. Abel started to pull the trigger, but took one outside for a ball. Ibarra steps back behind the rubber, now steps up and ready to bring it. That is a fly ball to right field. It's going back. Casey Perkins, it drops out of her glove. It was in her glove and squirted out. And Abel will end up at second base. So now it's time for the Travis teammates to pick up right fielder Casey Perkins. And here is Becca Raby, plays first base, right-handed hitter. Ibarra starts it with a fastball. It's a little comeback roller. Ibarra over to Camacho, gets the out. And so ends the first inning. But one run on one hit. It was the homer by Amy Abke. One error and one runner left on base. We'll be back with inning number two. It is Seven Lakes one and Travis one. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Rachel Ibarra leads off for Travis in the top of the second in a 1-1 game. A game three with seven lakes out of Katie ISD. Winner moves on in the playoffs to second round. And the loser will be inventorying its softball gear. Here's the pitch. That one is low. It's actually the third pitch of the at bat. And the count is 3-0 on Rachel Ibarra. She's near the back of the box, swings righty, taking all the way, and it was high for ball four. And a grin on her face as she makes her way to first. Now it's Lauren Garza. She hit a bomb last night. Hit it down the left field line and it was fair by about 15 feet. Level, level. 
Nobody had a multi-hit game on either team last night. Abke brings it and has a ground ball towards first base and it gets past the first baseman, Raby. And he goes into left field and they're gonna throw back to first. There will be runners at first and third. And by the way, Ibarra is not running for herself. It's L. Smith. So she's at third now. Garza is at first. I'm not really sure how to call that. I'm going to give her a hit. It's not as if the first baseman, Raby, made contact with the ball. And here's the first pitch coming into Camacho. She showed bunt. She let it go. And after the pitch arrived, Garza took second, stolen base. So two runners in scoring position with nobody out in the top of the second. Abke spinning the ball. She brings it. And that is a line drive to the left center field gap. It will get down and one hop the wall. That's going to bring home two runs. And Camacho pulls into second with a two run double. And it's three to one, Tigers. Oh, she powered that one. So L. Smith came home. She was courtesy runner for Ibarra. Garza also crossed the plate. And we'll see if the rally can continue here. Ashley Rojas in the batter's box, center fielder for Travis. Here's the pitch to her. Just missed the outside corner. Emily Camacho has hit, put Travis on top, three to one. There's a pitch that's inside and Rojas kind of has to lift her right foot to make sure it didn't hit her. Abke pitching for the third straight night. And that pitch is high, Rojas draws a walk. Now it's Casey Perkins. Perkins got to feel pretty good. When she didn't catch the fly ball, her teammates picked her right up, got the next out. So no harm done. And here she is with a chance to do some damage to Seven Lakes. And the first pitch is inside. She kind of had to move out like a jackknife to avoid getting hit with that one. Righty hitter Casey Perkins with a very colorful bat. Here's the pitch. That's down and in for a ball. Got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of red. So I guess those are the, the primary colors on her back. I may not be a smart man, but I know that. She swings and misses at a high pitch. That probably would have been ball three, but it's two and one. And the sun is out. Surface is drying a little bit. And the wind's still blowing out to left. Swung on and missed. Two and two on Perkins. Still nobody out in the inning. Pitch on the way. Called strike three. That's the first out. So we've got Camacho at second after her two run double. Rojas is at first and now back to the top of the order. Pitch outside to Ariel Kowalewski. So she's two for her last two. Plus a pair of walks last night. Takes a big rip at that one and foul tip back into the net. We're going to keep up with the Ridge Point girls today. They are taking on Tompkins in a game that was supposed to start at noon, just like this one. 
Pitch to Ariel is down and away. I asked her parents if she was named Ariel because of the Little Mermaid, and they said, well, they, they didn't really say a hard no, but they did say they had a dog named Sebastian. Here's the pitch, and that is high to left field. That is deep. It is gone! The AK-47 strikes again! And it's six to one, Travis! Two homers for Ariel. And now there is time called by Katie Spencer, and I think we're gonna have a possible pitching change. They do an appeal here. They were saying that they thought maybe one of the Travis players didn't touch home plate, so they, they made the appeal but the home plate umpire gave the safe signal, so everything counts. It's six to one, and I don't know if we're gonna have a change here or not, but I know Katie Spencer needs to talk to her team. Wow, you know, big players, uh, great players do big things in big games. And three for her last three with two homers, that's, that's pretty good for Ariel Kowalewski. Now Riley Westmoreland goes up there and, you know, she always likes to kind of get loose. You know, she'll hold the, the bat up there like she's doing a military press and stretch out. Well, you gotta be relaxed when you go up there. Still nobody out, actually one out, sorry. And it's six to one. And that pitch gets away from Abke. Looks like it's a, a wet ball and so they'll exchange it for a dry one. So Travis has broken out with the biggest lead in this series by either team. Three to nothing was the final in game one when Seven Lakes had the victory. There's a pitch that is down. And Westmoreland showed bunt, but she didn't offer at it, so it's two and oh. Open stance from the left-handed box. Pitch on the way is high. She wears uh, silver eye black, and I think that's kind of a contradiction in terms. I guess you'd call it eye silver, and it doesn't do anything to fight the glare, but then we don't have any glare today, except those little moments where the sun peeks through. And Westmoreland draws a walk. It's been a nightmare inning for Abke. Two walks, a homer, a double. No, three walks, a homer, a double, and a single. Now Kennedy Clark. And she holds up her bare hand and asks for time. Kennedy hit a pop-up to Ashley Abel at third base. Takes a strike at the letters. Ab keep moving the ball around. Now brings it. There's a change up. Caught the outside corner for a strike and it's nothing and two. Clark crowding the plate. Pitch on the way. Outside one and two. She's got a little wristband on her right wrist. Looks like one of those that you get at Typhoon, Texas, but I'll bet it's not from there. Here's the pitch. That's high in the air to left field, but it's gonna be Megan Kelly circling back and making the catch, gets it back in. Westmoreland retreats to first. Maddie Morris struck out swinging in inning number one, but she'd like to add to the 6-1 Travis lead here in the top of the second. Change up, just missed the outside corner. For those of you that are fans of baseball, but you don't really follow softball that much, 
Pitching changes are much more rare in softball. Abke brings that one, and that was right where the first one was, just missing the outside corner, two and nothing. And often you have squads where they have maybe one or two girls that pitch. Abke brings the 2-0, and that's a smash down the third baseline, rolling toward the corner, but it's only gonna be a single as Megan Kelly gets it back in quickly. But the Travis rally continues with two outs. By the way, let's see. First of all, we got Rachel Ibarra in the batter's box, but over in the on-deck area, you have Lauren Garza, and she threw the, the bat to Kennedy Clark, who made a brilliant one-handed catch and might have prevented an injury. I don't know, but it was a great catch of the bat. Ibarra ready, looks at the changeup, called strike. So it's official, Travis has batted around here in the second. Ibarra takes strike two. Ibarra ready, Abke brings it high and away. One and two. The Tigers so far have unleashed the powerful bats and they lead six to one. Down and away with that change up. And Abke delivers again. That is high to the left center field gap and it is gone! Rachel Ibarra hits a bomb! A two run shot makes it eight to one and I think that's gonna be it for Amy Abke. Big celebration at home plate. All of the players are out of the dugout. Make it nine to one. Travis kind of pouring it on right now, and dare we dream of a run rule victory in game three? I don't know, maybe it's a little too early to think about that. But now, we'll have a new pitcher, and we'll tell you who she is when we return on FightFortBend.com. Nine to one, Travis, and they're still batting two outs in the top of the second. GetAgreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAgreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. Ashley Abel comes in from third place to pitch. And her first delivery is outside to Lauren Garza. Garza is one for one and has scored once. It's nine to one, Travis, top of the second. Abel brings it and released it a little bit too late and that pit pitch went high. And by the way, Amy Abke is now at third base and uh, Got, you've got to hurt for her. She pitched so well this series, but I think even with the softball delivery that isn't as taxing as pitching a baseball, I think she's just run out of gas. There's a pitch down and away for a ball.
So here's Abel's pitch. She threw the let up and got the strike, called on the outside corner, and it's three and one. She's also a right-hander, just like Abke. Brings it, and that's outside, and drawing the walk is Lauren Garza. Now Emily Camacho, who earlier this inning had a two-run double. Camacho getting her first look at Abel. Here it comes. Outside corner strike. Abel brings it. And that's a line drive to center field, but it is caught. Nice catch out there by Emily Johnson, and that ends the inning, but Travis comes through with eight runs. Wow. And they lead it nine to one. We'll continue going to the bottom of the second on VibeFortBend.com. Travis nine, Seven Lakes one. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Ridgepoint is playing their game three against Tompkins today, and that one is close, but Tompkins is up one to nothing on the Lady Panthers in the second. In fact, at the end of two innings, it is one to nothing, Tompkins over Ridgepoint. So for these Seven Lake Spartans, they've got a big hill to climb. Emily Johnson, Haley Welch, and Cecilia Sauer to come up in this inning. First pitch on the way from Ibarra. It's up to right field. It's in the gap and it gets down. One hop off the wall and Emily Johnson goes to second. She'll stay right there. That's a good start for these Spartans. Now Haley Welch comes up. Haley last night was 0 for 2 and Rachel Ibarra struck her out one time. Here's the pitch, bunted but foul on the right side. Next pitch is high, and it's not, not hard to deliver a pitch high to Haley Welch. She is, uh, shall we say, diminutive so far. Swings and misses at a high one. The count now one and two. And that's fouled straight back. Defense for your Tigers, 
Kennedy Clark catching. Emily Camacho at first. Maddie Morris is in second. Lauren Garza at short and Ariel Kowalewski at third. Got her swinging on the changeup. One away in the bottom of the second. Emily Johnson still parked out there at second and now it's Haley Welch. Correction, uh, Cecilia Sauer. Welch just struck out. But she was hit by a pitch. So we have two runners on now with one out. And now Emma Wingate, the catcher. But we're going to have a courtesy runner for Seven Lakes. I see someone wearing number six. That is Michelle Tabo. Okay. I usually find out how to say all the names, but this time I just don't know. It is Michelle Tabawada. There we go. Yeah, Michelle Tabawada is running at first base. For Sauer. And now Emma Wingate is in the batter's box and she has an 0-1 count. Rachel brings it. Just missed the outside corner. Wind continuing to blow hard out toward left. Pitch on the way, swung on and missed. It's one and two. Little trickeration on the part of Rachel Ibarra. Now she brings it, and a foul tip still alive. No, the fans are reacting, but nothing happened because it was a foul tip, and Kennedy Clark didn't catch it. She's smiling and laughing at the home plate umpire, thinking, you know, if I just go about my business of throwing down to third and trying to throw out Johnson, well, maybe you'll, you'll let it go our way. Pitch outside. Travis fans are upset. They thought it was strike three, but I think it was a good call by the home plate umpire. It's two and two. Ibarra smiling, looking comfortable and relaxed. Brings the two, two. Oh, so close. Outside for ball three. <laughs> And I'm hearing some of those cliches that you always hear coming out of the crowd. Here comes the pitch. That's a line drive to left field and it's down for a hit. And now all the runners will hold after advancing one base. It's a base hit for Wingate. She's at first. Tabawada is at second. And it's Emily Johnson who led off this inning with a double. She's at third. Seven Lakes trying to start their comeback early and beat the rush. And the first pitch is down and away to Cameron Waldman. Plays second base. Cameron looks at the second pitch. It's outside, two and nothing on the number nine hitter in the Seven Lakes order. Cameron came in to pinch hit last night, was 0 for 1. Right-handed hitter takes a pitch on the outside corner strike. It's 1 and 2. She wears no glove on the left hand. And, and by the way, from here, it looks like she did a wonderful job getting her nails done. But she has a glove on the right hand, and she takes that pitch high, and it's 3 and 1. Rachel Ibarra was... Spotted the nine to one lead. She wants to make sure nothing gets out of hand here. There's a strike on the outside corner and the count goes full. We have one out and the base is loaded. Seven Lakes trailing Travis nine to one in the bottom of the second, but threatening right here. Pitch on the way. Hard ground ball back through the middle for 
an RBI, and in fact, just one. Beautiful throw from Ashley Rojas in center field, and that means that everybody just gets to move up one. Johnson scored, Tabawada is now at third, Wingate is at second. And Abke got the base hit. Now here's Stutz. By the way, I know what I did. I said Cameron Wallman. She is playing second base but not batting. So sorry about that, Amy Abke. Pitch outside to Mackenzie Stutz, and the count on her is one and one. So uh, I gave credit to Cameron Wallman for nails that actually belong to Amy Abke. I'm sorry, Amy, and her family. Pitch to Stutz, bounces in, and it's two and one. A noon start on this game that uh, they were gonna try to play last night, but they decided after game two to go home. And that is to right field. It's gonna hang up, I think. No, it's gonna drop in front of going to drop in front of Perkins and a run scores. It's now nine to three. And still only one out in the bottom of the second. And it's going to be time for a meeting of all the players inside the pitcher's circle. Softball, a smaller field, so it's a lot easier to do that. Kenzie Stutz gets that base hit. She's now one for two. Drove home a run. The bases remain loaded, and it's nine to three. Travis still comfortably ahead, but you want to put an end to this real quick. Here's the first pitch, and it's a tapper foul to Megan Kelly. Kelly struck out in inning number one. Right-handed hitter. Ibarra working quickly, brings it, and it's a liner right back through the middle and in the center field. And that'll score one more run. It's now nine to four. Rojas with another good, strong throw, but when Kate comes in, Abke moves to third, Stutz to second, and Kelly is parked at first base after a hit. And the Tigers lead in hits. Actually, it's tied in hits now, six to six. And the margin has shrunk to nine four. And now Ashley Abel squares to bunt, comes up empty, and it's 0 and 1. The scoreboard says 1 and 0, but it's got to be 0 and 1. And it doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. Home plate umpire probably has a count of 0-1. There's swung on and missed. And the home plate umpire does hold up two fingers on the right hand, so it is 0-2, and now the scoreboard has been corrected. Ashley Abel ready. Here's the pitch. Outside, good call. Just trying to get her to chase. And she didn't. Base is still loaded. Loaded. Uh, Seven Lakes has been playing station to station softball. Here's the pitch. That's also outside. Kennedy Clark trying to frame it, but the home plate umpire has been accurate with her calls. And it's two and two. I can say that because of my proximity. I just have a good view of the outside corner to the right handers. Got her swinging. That's the second out. Now, it's up to Becca Raby. First pitch to her is a foul tip off the end of the bat, strike one. Raby grounded back to Ibarra in inning number one.
And there's another comebacker to Ibarra, to Hopper, throws to Camacho, and Travis gets out of the inning. Seven Lakes scores three times. And we'll be back with more going to the top of the third. Travis nine, Seven Lakes four. There are no words to describe it. The isolation, the boredom, the loneliness. If you're wondering where your teenage son or daughter's spirit went, you're hardly alone. The past year has been devastating, especially for them. But here's the good news. They might just find it again, playing high school sports. Workouts that stimulate, teammates and coaches that care, the sense of belonging so many of us have been missing lately. That's what school sports are all about. The sense of achievement is real, and the camaraderie is hard to beat. Coping with uncertainty is difficult, but school sports can help the teenagers in your family start feeling like themselves again. Encourage them to give it a try. High school sports, it's so much more than a game. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Are you craving a Dr. Pepper and wanting the creamy satisfaction of a Whataburger shake? Now you can have the best of both worlds with Whataburger's Dr. Pepper shake. Treat yourself to one while you can. The Dr. Pepper shake is only available at Whataburger for a limited time. Travis back to work with the bats, leading nine to four in the top of the third. The first pitch to Ashley Rojas is high for a ball. Ashley Abel now pitching for Seven Lakes in relief of the starter. Amy Abke and the second pitch is outside to Rojas. Rojas walked as a part of that big second inning. Here's the pitch. That's a ground ball up the middle, but picked off by the shortstop Stutz, and she throws and pulled the first base player off the bag. A throwing error by the shortstop Stutz, and Rojas is on. You know, I'm not even sure that should be an error because I think that maybe Ashley was gonna beat it anyway. Here's the first pitch to Casey Perkins, and she started to swing, but held back, and it was outside for ball one. Perkins struck out looking the first time around. Here's the pitch by Abel. She took something off that one, swung on and missed. And it's one and one. Rojas is at first, ready to run. Here's the pitch and it gets underneath the catcher Wingate and she will get to run and she doesn't have to slide. She's in scoring position with nobody out and the pitch was a ball, so it's two and one. Perkins crowding the plate from the right-handed box. Pitch on the way, swung on and missed. You know, she's getting the bat around. The thing is, I think she is expecting fastball. And I think we might see Abel keep throwing her change-ups. But then she might be setting her up for the heater. Here it comes. That is a change-up, and it's a little dribble in front of the mound. She's safe. No throw. It was one of those perfect frozen ropes that rolled about, I don't know, 12 feet, maybe. It was in no girl's land. And guess what? We're going back to the top of the order. And it's Ariel Kowalewski. Can she hit three home runs? Can she, can she think she's Reggie Jackson or something? Here's the first pitch. And it's high. They might pitch around her. This is the first time that Abel has faced her. Okay. 
Here's the 1-0, and it's a hard ground ball to shortstop. They get one out at second as Stutz flips to Wallman, but one run scores, and it's now 10-4, Travis on top as Ashley Rojas comes across the plate. So that's an RBI, although it wasn't quite as exciting as her first two for Ariel Kowalewski. And there, there's Westmoreland, always running up on the pitch and lets that one go by in there for a strike. Westmoreland walked in the second. And she fouls one off, and she fouled it off of her left leg before she left the batter's box. And Coach Katie Spencer is going to come up and ask the home plate umpire, was she in the box when the ball hit her? If she was out of the box and in fair territory when the ball hit her, she's out. But I'm pretty sure that she was still in the box and the home plate umpire evidently uh, uh, concurs. Don't go away. It's a 10-4 game, but a lot can happen. Westmoreland with no gloves. Hits a ground ball to the shortstop Stutz. She fires across and gets the out, two away. Kowalewski moves to second. Now it's Kennedy Clark. Kennedy hit a pop up to Abel when she was playing third base. And she hit a fly ball to left field to Megan Kelly. Lefty hitter. Let's the first one go by, and it's downstairs for a ball. Really crowds the plate. Clark has her toes on the white line in the left-handed box. And she hits a roller to first base. That'll be an easy play for Raby. Steps on the bag, and that'll do it. Tigers add a run. They're on top 10 to four as we move to the bottom of the third in this game three playoff. We'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com You are the master of the multitask. The champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Taking care of business. We want to thank all the folks here at Cy Woods. It's a great place to play softball, and one of those that can take a lot more rain than most of the fields around Greater Houston. So after an inning and a half, Travis was up nine to one. And Seven Lakes scored three times in their half of the second. To close that lead to nine to four, Travis added a run in their half of the third. And here we go to the bottom of the third. Kennedy Clark catching Rachel Ibarra, Emily Camacho at first base. At second, it's Maddie Mora. Shortstop is Lauren Garza. Ariel Kowalewski at third. Riley Westmoreland in left field. Ashley Rojas in center. And Casey Perkins in right field. First pitch swinging and fouled back by Emily Johnson. Emily Johnson has a double in her only other plate appearance today. Swings and cue shot fouls it off the end of her bat and the count is nothing and two. Rachel E. 
Ibarra wearing the bright pink flower right where her ponytail starts to come down and trying to go the other way was Johnson and it's foul wide of first base. We'll get you an update on Ridgepoint whenever we can, but I can tell you that the Katy Tigers eliminated the Austin Bulldog girls in a sweep with an 11 to one win last night. And Johnson trying to go the other way again, but ball rattles off the top of the Travis dugout on the first base side. Rich Point has taken a two to one lead on Tompkins as Emily Johnson fouls one on the left this time. So Reagan Green got a double to drive home Grace Yannick and another Ridge Point teammate. It's now two to one Ridge Point and that game is in the third. Emily Johnson still hanging in there, but the count nothing and two. She's fouled off three pitches already. Squares to bunt. Swings away, but fouls it back again. In softball, you can swing away and foul them off as long as you want. But if you continue to attempt to bunt, the third time that you foul it off attempting to bunt, then it's a strikeout. Check swing down and away. They appeal to the infield umpire at first base and he says no swing. And I think he's right. Emily Johnson did not go around. Katie Spencer, her coach, is saying eyes. You got to have the good eyes here. Now she's squaring to bunt one more time, lets it go, and it bounces off the field turf. The count now two and two. This is one of those, if Emily Johnson walks, you say great at bat. And it's a ground ball to second. Maddie Morris over to Camacho, one out. Emily Johnson didn't really let it rip on that swing. Which is a credit to Rachel Ibarra, just didn't give her anything that she could really drive. Now Haley Welch. Welch, front of the right-handed box, swings at the first pitch. Down and away, but uh, her bat couldn't reach it. She took that rip. And I'll tell you something, uh, just based on what I've seen of Haley Welch, I don't think she's ever seen a pitch she didn't like. Ground ball, scooped up by Kowalewski, quickly across, two away. Ariel had her play just right, and it was a slow roller that Ariel had to move to her left, so basically her, the momentum of her steps are already taking her toward first base anyway. Cecilia Sauer, hit by a pitch the first time, takes a strike on the outside corner to begin this at bat. Ibarra rocks and fires, that one's high. Two white gloves, four sour. Ground ball fouled wide of third. She spells her last name S-A-U-R, so there's no connection between her and the former University of Texas receiver George Sauer, who's played, uh, spelled his last name S-A-U-E-R, and he caught a lot of passes from Joe Namath. Here's the pitch. Just getting a piece to foul it back into the screen, and Sauer is still alive. You can, you can do a lot with the name Cecilia Sauer. She lines one into right field, and that's a base hit. And so, Cecilia, you're breaking my heart. See what I did there, Simon and Garfunkel? Anyway, um, by the way, my sister really got in trouble for letting me listen to that song. It's actually Celia, one less syllable. 
But uh, if you read the lyrics uh, at the time, that was pretty racy, and my sister got in trouble for letting me listen to it. All right, so with Sauer on board at first base, the inning continues. And it's Emma Wingate, the catcher. She's got a single today. And the other games have been singles parties. You know what I mean? Hardly any extra base hits. There's a strike on the outside corner. Count now nothing and two on Wingate. Now last night, we did see a pair of homers. There's the pitch high. Correction, just the one actually. So Lauren Garza had the homer. Kennedy Clark had the double. Other than that, it was a singles party, but we've had multiple homers today. Wingate ready, started to go, left it alone, and that was a good decision. Ball low to make it two and two. Two outs, it is 10 to four. Travis on top, has seven lakes bats in the bottom of the third. Ibarra delivers, got her swinging. And we'll go to the fourth. Travis 10, seven lakes, four. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. While Travis leads 10-4 to here over Seven Lakes, the Ridgepoint Panther girls are doing pretty well today in their game three against Tompkins. And Ridgepoint is definitely the underdog, but Riley Ship has just drawn a bases loaded walk to push home a run. And it's now Ridgepoint three and Tompkins one with the Panthers batting in the bottom of the fourth. Maddie Morris batting for your Travis Tigers. Ashley Abel on the mound for Seven Lakes. Pitch on the way, swung on and missed. It makes it one and one. Actually, I think it was a foul tip and it avoided the mitt of Emma Wingate. Now the pitch, took something off of it and fighting it off very nicely. Big second inning. Abel brings it, and that bounced, uh, I don't know, 15 feet from home plate. I think maybe the ball was a little bit wet. We have had no precipitation during this game, but the field is still kind of wet. There's a pitch down and away. Good eye there. digs in from the right-handed box. Abel brings it. And that one is over but low and she draws a walk to start the top of the fourth. Now Rachel Ibarra. She's homered to help her own cause. I mean, how about that? She's already driven in three runs. Kowalewski has driven in five. In the attack that has made it 10 to four. First pitch, a ball to Ibarra.
Abel brings it. That's downstairs. And the wind is blowing in a, such that uh, Rachel's ponytail is kind of coming up on the left there, kind of. It could possibly get in the way of her seeing the ball just right. Here's the pitch. That one's high. Uh, what's going on here? They, um, Maddie Morris is out. She left the base too early and she's called out. Wow, I'm going to put LBE in my scorebook. Left base early. You never get that when you cover baseball games. The count to Ibarra is... Well, the scoreboard was wrong. It says 3-0. and It must be 2-1. and Or maybe... Maybe the scoreboard operator called that last pitch a ball, but it was ruled a no pitch because of Morris leaving early. There's a powered shot to left center field gap and it hits the wall on the fly. Ibarra thinks about second, but she's gonna stay at first. Wow, Rachel Ibarra. I don't know if you could hear the ball smack the wall, but it sounded kind of like the metal wall at Fenway. And she's replaced by a courtesy runner and gets a welcome back to the dugout. L. Smith running for her at first. And now Lauren Garza hit the homer last night. Takes the first pitch. You heard it. You might have heard it bounce off of the field turf surface. Well, that was a wall banger. Here's the pitch. Here's a little tapper and it trickles into foul territory on the left side. Picked up by Amy Abke. After the home run last night, Garza singled today and drew a walk. Takes a rip at that one and fouls it off the bottom of the bat. Sun's starting to peek through again. One out in the top of the fourth. Pitch on the way, swung on and missed. Make it two outs as Ashley Abel got her swinging. So with Garza taken care of, now it is Emily Camacho. Hit the ball hard twice, got a double out of one of those, but the other one she lined out to the center fielder, Emily Johnson. Run in at first base, that's L. Smith. It's a humid day, Wingate after throwing the ball back to her pitcher, takes the left hand out of the catcher's mitt, dries it off before putting it back in. Camacho takes a rip and another one trickles back to the backstop. One and one. So that's uh, the ball that Abel really needs to kind of rub it up and dry it off before she throws again because it was tapped back to the backstop. You see her kind of drying it off on the uniform pants. That is high in the air to left field. Megan Kelly coming in and she slides but can't make the catch, it drops in. L. Smith advances from first to third on a single by Camacho. Camacho is two for three. Runners at the corners, two away. And now Ashley Rojas, who has walked and reached on an error with a chance to add to the 10-4 Travis lead in the top of the fourth. And now the wind looks like it shifted, blowing to straightaway center. That pitch down and away. Abel kind of has the option if she wants to Pitch Rojas very carefully, she can. Casey Perkins on deck. That pitch is high and she might be doing just that. Two and nothing.
And if Rojas walks, I'm going to tell you something. I, I can't remember if I told you this earlier in the broadcast. She swings and fouls it back. It's 2-1. and one. I'll go ahead and tell you now. The UIL, University Interscholastic League, governs all interscholastic high school sports and other extracurricular activities, has decided that there won't be any competition Monday through Thursday of the coming week. No games at all. So VibeFortBend.com will get back into business on Friday. Ground ball to center field. It's a base hit for Rojas. L. Smith scores. It's 11 to 4. That is a clutch two out hit. And now Casey Perkins has a chance to kind of add on to it. Pitch on the way, lined into center field, base hit. Camacho is being held at third. And now the throw gets away, Camacho is coming home. She's safe. It's 12 to four. The throw was a good one, but it bounced over Wingate's mitt, went to the backstop, and look who's coming up. It's the AK-47, and now with a lead of 12 to four, and somebody that you know has home run power and the center field wind at her back. Well, we might be thinking about run rule now. Ashley Abel working to Kowalewski. That pitch is high. Left-handed hitter who powered the ball out twice to left center field. And just a sophomore. Pitch on the way. That's outside. This might be a pitch around situation. Not that Riley Westmoreland is, is not a tough customer, but Kowalewski has already gone deep on you twice. Here's the pitch. And that is down the left field line, twisting into foul territory. Megan Kelly coming on and makes a great catch. Great catch by Megan Kelly. And classy applause by the Travis fans. Man, that was awesome. She ran, I'm thinking, at least a good 15 yards and kind of caught the ball on the way down and kind of had a snow cone coming out the top of her glove. That's an awesome play. But Travis does score more. Two added to the mix, and they lead it 12 to 4 as we go to the bottom of the fourth on VibeFortBend.com. Fast Wi Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid or two kids or three kids, especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Welcome back, Rachel Ibarra and the Travis Tigers. Hopefully just a couple of innings away from polishing off this series. And in the bottom of the fourth, it is the Seven Lake Spartans trying to get back into this one. They trail it 12 to four, it's a game three. And that is a high pop up. <laughs> Emily Camacho came and just wanted to catch it ricocheting and she was looking right into the sun she just turned away. The sun is out. And Ibarra delivers a ball to make it one and one. 
Amy Hapke leading off in the bottom of the fourth. She'll be followed by Mackenzie Stutz and Megan Kelly. There's a pitch that just misses the outside corner in the count three and one. Abke ready, and that pitch is outside. She draws a walk to start the fourth. So here is Stutz. She's one for two with a single. She takes the first pitch for a strike, and then there's a throw down from catcher Clark to Camacho, but they didn't get Abke off the base. Here's the pitch. Stutz with a ground ball to second. Morris was obstructed, and the umpire is going to call, going to call the base runner, Abke, out for getting in the way of Matty Morris making a play on the ball. So there's one away and Stutz reaches. Now Megan Kelly, who made that outstanding catch to end the top of the fourth, looks at a pitch high. There's a throw down and Stutz dives back in. S-T-U-T-T-S, -T -T unlike the Stutz Bearcat classic automobile. Pitch on the way, Megan Kelly swings and sliding down to second out is Stutz. Kennedy Clark threw her out. Two outs. Oh, what a beautiful throw and an outstanding tag by Maddie Morris. Woo! So Rachel Ibarra hasn't had any one, two, three innings, but she has a chance here to face the minimum. Pitch outside to Kelly and the count now two and one. You can hear the murmur through the crowd. They can't get over what a great throw that was. Megan Kelly shoots a foul off the screen on the right side. Base is clean, 12 to four, Travis, bottom of the fourth. And there's a fly ball down the right field line. Casey Perkins coming on and it drops, but it's foul. Yeah, that was a great effort. And she dived. By the way, I've had English teachers debate over, should it be dove or dived? I've heard some say that dove is not a word. D-O-V-E is dove, that's a bird. Kelly swings and misses. Just to be sure, Clark tags her out as the pitch bounced in. And Rachel Ibarra does face the minimum in the bottom of the fourth. We will go to the fifth. Travis trying to close out the series and leading by a score of 12 to four. We'll have a, re a report on Ridge Point when we come right back. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid or two kids or three kids, especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's Okay, fans, uh, this has happened a couple of times. Our little commercial player sometimes just quits. You know, I don't know if you've ever had one of those dogs that you take the dog on a walk and maybe it's a warm summer day and the dog just says, I'm done. I'm going to test and see if this thing is going to work. I reopened it. Is this going to work? 
First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Riley Westmoreland leads off the top of the fifth, and it's surprising that she would lead off because you know what that means? It means Ariel Kowaleski was actually retired by the defense, and that was a great catch by Megan Kelly in foul territory. Oh, Ashley Abel... <laughs> Ashley Abel delivered a pitch that bounced closer to the pitcher's circle than to home plate. And somebody told uh, Riley Westmoreland, good eye. That's kind of funny. Here's the 1-1. She swings and misses. Never stands still while she swings. Riley Westmoreland specializing in the, the running swing. Kind of like uh, Happy Gilmore hits a golf ball but Happy Gilmore was right-handed as a golfer and uh, Riley swings lefty. First pitch to her, I'm sorry, next pitch to her. Got her swinging, down she goes. One away at the top of the fifth. Kennedy Clark ready. Here comes the Tigers catcher. She also bats lefty with no gloves, just like Westmoreland, and lets the first pitch go down, and it's ball one. Clark popped up, flied to left field, and hit a ground ball to first base. She needs to get in the hit column. Takes a pitch high. But hey, she threw someone out trying to steal. She's got a strong wind at her back. Get it up in the air towards center, see what happens. Here's the pitch. That's a strike. Two and one. Kennedy with her toes on the line of the left-handed batter's box. Takes a rip at that one and she was way out in front, fouled it on the right. Abel drawing the ball off, spinning a little bit, gets the grip, brings it, that's high. The count now goes full on Kennedy Clark. She steps in and she's even closer to the plate now, waiting for the 3-2 pitch. Just got a piece. She will live to swing again and she's laughing about something. One thing about softball, when I broadcast these games, I'm closer and I can kind of see who's laughing and who's not. It's harder to see on the more spacious baseball field. Clark swings and it's a foul tip strike into the mid of Wingate. And there are two outs. Now Matty Morris struck out, singled and Drew a walk in the fourth inning, but she left the base early and had to go sit down. Here's the pitch. That one bounces about six feet in front of the plate, and it's 1-0. and oh. They call Matty Morris M&M. Swings and misses at the changeup. Ashley Abel looks like she's really found her groove out there. Her team on the wrong end of a 12-4 score, but she's pitching well. Here it comes. Outside corner strike and the count's one and two. Abel brings it. 
And there's a tapper foul that bounces up and hits Morris. By the way, I noticed that Ashley Abel, you don't see too many players do this. She wears the shades, I mean the the Diddy Bop shades, the really dark ones underneath her protective metal mask. Just outside, and the count now goes two and two. We're in the top of the fifth of a game three. Travis, after losing game one, three to nothing, came back to win in the clutch, two to one last night. And we have enough good weather to play game three, and there's a ground ball foul. Morris sends it wide of third base. And the umpire over there tried to make a play. So no competition of any kind, nothing on VibeFortBend.com Monday through Thursday of the coming week. And then we'll have baseball and softball playoffs continuing as there's a pitch outside. It now goes three and two on Matty Morris. So it's gonna to be tough to make the decisions on what to broadcast on Friday and Saturday. Here's a ground ball foul again outside of third and rolls down toward the corner. Megan Kelly picks it up over there. And the ball rattled around. Good time for Ashley able to take a few extra seconds to dry off the ball. Another 3-2. Morris ready and she lines one into left center field. And that will roll all the way to the wall. She will go to second. Maddie Morris in with a double. So how about those Travis Tigers? They've got two doubles and three home runs. By the way, the triple in softball is, at least on a surface such as this, is kind of unusual. I won't say rare, not quite rare. Two out double by Morris, puts her at second. Now Rachel Ibarra looks at the first pitch that's in there for a strike. Ashley Abel was so close to a 1-2-3 inning and even close to three strikeouts in the inning. Next one to Ibarra is a strike on the outside corner. It's one and one, or correction, it's 0-2. Oh yep, 0-2, oh the home plate umpire confirms it. Pitch on the way outside, good take by Rachel. Rachel has always been a popular name, but I think very popular after the TV show Friends. You know, Rachel Green, Jennifer, what's her name? Pitch bounces in, and that will enable Morris to move to third. And that was a wild pitch. There was really nothing Wingate could do as the ball had a lot of spin on it. It bounced well in front of the plate, and then it kicked off of the umpire's shoulder. Nothing the umpire could do either. She tried to get out of the way. Here's the next pitch, and that one also bounces in. And the count now three and two. The pitch, and Ibarra hits a tapper foul right over to where Coach Katie Spencer of Seven Lakes is sitting on the ball bucket. Ibarra has walked, homered, and singled. Here's the pitch. Gets it up in the air, but it won't go very far. It's the shortstop, Stutz. She's got it on the green field turf just beyond the cut of the infield. And that'll do it for Travis in the top of the fifth, but they still lead it 12 to 4. We're on VibeFortBend.com. We'll be right back.
GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Well, how about the Travis Tigers leading 12 to four in the fifth? And how about the Ridge Point Panthers leading Tompkins seven to three also in the fifth? They're playing at Cy Falls High School, I believe. Ashley Abel leads off for Seven Lakes. Rachel Ibarra still out there throwing smoke and enjoying a 12 to four lead. She's given up seven hits, but scattered them pretty well. The second pitch is one that bounces in there. I believe it's 2-0. and oh. That pitch is inside to Abel. All right, it was 1-1 one and one before that pitch. It is now one and two. Pitch on the way. That's high and outside. Beware that wind blowing out to center and left center. Just off the end of the bat. Nice spoil by Ashley Abel to stay alive. Raby and Emily Johnson do. Ibarra rocks in, fires, called strike three. Like I said, she's throwing smoke. Yeah, nice pitch indeed. I believe that strikeout number six. She's throwing 65% strikes and she's delivered 89 pitches. She starts Raby with a swinging strike. As efficient as she's been, I don't think she's had a one, two, three inning. No, she has not. Not to this point. There's a foul ball back. Raby is down 0-2. Wind really blowing hard now. I hope it's not bothering you and your ears. It's behind us, and that's a good thing. Swinging strikeout. Kennedy throws, or Kennedy Clark throws down to Camacho and completes the put out. Two away. Now she's going to go for that elusive one-two-three inning as Emily Johnson comes in. She's one for two with a double. Right near the front of the box. Very aggressive hitter. And she rips it on the ground foul to the left. Travis, by the way, wearing the all white uniform. Sometimes I like to wear the red pants. Seven Lakes wearing the same 
road graze that they had on last night. Two away and the base is empty. Ooh, that was close. But a ball and Rachel Ibarra smiles. Johnson ready. Takes one that is a strike. One and two on Emily Johnson. She squares to bunt. Swings away and it's a little pop up to Maddie Morris at second. She's got it and it is a one, two, three inning for Rachel Ibarra. And Morris just gives her the ball right now and everybody gets ready to hit one more time. And this is the top of the sixth coming. It's an eight run game, 12 to four. So Travis is in a position to put together a little rally here and run rule the Seven Lake Spartans in this game three. We'll be right back. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Lauren Garza, Emily Camacho, and Ashley Rojas to bat for Travis in the top of the sixth. The Tigers lead at 12-4 in what, if they can hold on, will be a series clinching game over Seven Lakes. And the first pitch is a ball outside. One thing I've noticed that's different about softball and baseball. Pitch by Abel is grounded into center field for a base hit. Lauren Garza leads off the six with a single. So you notice in baseball when the pitcher is warming up at the start of a half inning, whoever's playing third base is going to move to a spot where the first baseman throws little ground balls to him behind the mound. But in softball, the third base player moves over where the ground balls thrown to her go between the pitcher's circle and home plate. And I think in, in baseball, they just say that's distracting. We can't deal with that. The third base player needs to move, but it doesn't seem to bother the softball pitchers. Emily Camacho watches one bounce in, kicks away from the catcher and sliding into second safely is Garza. She's in scoring position. That's a wild pitch. Wingate did what she could to keep it in front. Garza with a good read. So I guess there's no possibility that a warm-up pitch and a ground ball to whoever's playing third base would actually collide in midair. Well, there's a pitch that's a ball, by the way. It's 3-0 and now on Camacho. And will they let her swing away on 3-0? and Maybe they should. Wind blowing hard, straight out. Here it comes. She takes ball four. Runners at first and second, and opportunity is knocking right here for that rally to try and make it a 10 run or more game. Camacho is at first, and sometimes they put in a courtesy runner for her, but she's staying out there. By the way, I'm going to finish that point when I can. Ashley Rojas now batting. First pitch to her is high. So, you would think that, you know, the warm-up pitches in softball wouldn't get hit by a ground ball, but during pregame practice, Bryce Harper hit, I don't know, I think it was a ball that was going to be a home run during batting practice. 
Pitch on the way. Lined into left field for a base hit. Garza coming around third. They will send her. No relay. It's cut off. And it's now 13 to 4, Travis. Still nobody out. Wow, what a consistent offensive attack throughout the lineup the Travis Tigers have had. So, so Bryce Harper hit this bomb in batting practice that was actually hit by one of the outfielders' practice throws. What are the odds? And then later in the week, Bryce Harper became big news when he was hit in the nose with a 97 mile an hour fastball. Now fortunately for him, it didn't catch him flush. It just kind of caught him clip the nose, but those guys are really tough. And there's a pitch to Casey Perkins, the second one of the plate appearance. Both of them down, and it's 2-0. and oh. Ashley Abel trying to keep it under 10, but right now it's a nine-run lead for Travis, 13-4. Here's the pitch. Here's a ground ball to Stutz. She flips to second for one, on to first. No double play. That is the first out. Runners at the corners with one away, and it's still 13 to four. And I've said it before in this game, and I will say, look who's coming up, Ariel Kobalewski. She's got two homers already. Here's the pitch. That's high, and Casey Perkins takes second without a throw. Two runners in scoring position. Kowalewski stepped to the front of the box. Now she's more in the middle. Here's the pitch. And that's high, two and nothing. Very favorable hitters count. Abel rubbing the softball, now bringing it. That's high and it's, oh, I guess, uh, it was actually one and one, not two and oh. So now it's two and one. And there's a ground ball through the left side. Stutz has it, throws to third. Tag gets the out, but a run scores. And it is 14 to four as Camacho comes home. Casey Perkins is thrown out at third and tagged. Kowalewski reaches on a feeler's choice. Now the lead is the Magic 10 runs, 14 to four. Riley Westmoreland now stands in. First pitch to Riley is downstairs for a ball. Riley is 0 for three, she needs to get her a hit. She did draw a walk. Yeah, I heard a parent say, you're due. And yes, she is. Here's the pitch. That is also down and it's 2-0. and oh. Ashley Abel rocks and fires. There's a strike on the outside corner, 2-1. and one. Westmoreland, low, slow practice swings, open stance from the left-handed box. That's upstairs, up around her eyes. And it's three and one. Catcher Kennedy Clark waiting to bat next. Westmoreland digs in. And that pitch is high to make it three and one. By the way, some expressions I use that just aren't appropriate for field turf, like digs in. Well, you can't dig in. That's what you do when you're standing in the dirt. The three two on the way, bounces in. She has a walk and Kowalewski moves to second. Now Kennedy Clark with another opportunity She is also hitless today. She needs to get her one. She 
steps in. Riley Westmoreland just drew a walk for the second time today. First pitch is outside to Clark. It is 14 to four, Travis. We're in the top of the sixth. They're trying to finish off a series. Ridge Point is the underdog at Tompkins, but leading at last report seven to three in the fifth. Here's the pitch. There's a hard ground ball at second. That'll be an easy play for Wallman, and that'll do it for Travis. But they do pick up the run that puts them up. Actually, they picked up two runs to move up by 14 to four. And now Rachel O'Vara will go back out to the pitcher's circle and try to shut down these Seven Lake Spartans one more time. We'll be right back on VibeFortMen.com. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Rachel Ibarra back to the pitcher's circle to try and finish this thing off. Seven Lakes is going to send up Haley Welch, Cecilia Sauer, and Emma Wingate, the 7-8-9 hitters, and we'll see if they go to the bench. Sauer is already out on deck. So if Katie Spencer is going to go to her bench, uh, she's not revealing what that choice would be. First pitch swinging, and it's a little tapper. Welch bounces it up off of her own leg after the foul ball. 0-2. Open stance, right-handed box, pitch on the way, bounces in. Now it's one and one. Next pitch is high and away. Tompkins is coming back on Ridge Point a little bit. In the sixth, it is Ridge Point seven and Tompkins five. There's a pitch in there for a strike that evens the count two and two. Travis has things well in hand right here. Pitch on the way. Got her swinging. One down. Now I noticed the shortstop Lauren Garza and all the infielders went inside the pitcher's circle, but she stayed there the longest and said one more thing to Rachel Ibarra and the first pitch is bounced in. Ball one as she works to Cecilia Sauer. Ibarra brings it. That one's high, two and oh. Barra brings the next one. That sure looked good, but it's ball three. Ra 
Rachel Roxon fires. Strike on the outside corner, three and one. I think I saw Cecilia Sauer nod her head. Yeah, good pitch. Sauer has power. Fouls it back into the vinyl padding and the count is now three and two. Ibarra shakes off a sign. Now she gets the one she wants. Here it comes. And that is ball four. And uh, <laughs> Sauer didn't realize it right away. Now she's going to first. Now Emma Wingate is going to hit for herself. And if she hits for herself, I think that there's no chance we're going to see any pinch hitters for Seven Lakes because once Wingate is either retired or reaches, then we're going to go back to the top of the order and we'll see Amy Abke. They pinch in at the corners. First pitch is a strike on Wingate. Wingate creeping closer to the line on the right-handed batter's box, but takes one outside. Pitch on the way, fouled straight back. And by the way, we have a courtesy runner. It's Michelle Tabawada. And she's running for Sauer. Here's a pitch in there for a strike. Called strike three. And down goes Wingate. Two outs. Abke ready, swings at the first pitch and fouls it off of her thigh. Katie Spencer, head coach of Seven Lakes, calls time, wants to talk to Abke just a moment. Clark goes out to the pitcher's circle. Kowalewski is there too, talking to Ibarra. And they're both smiling. It's nice to have a 14-4 lead in game three of a playoff series. Runner at first, two out, Abke in the box, here it comes. Down and away for a ball. There's another one, and that one is down for a ball. Two and one the count. And that one also bounces in. They really play Abke deep, especially with the wind blowing out. And she hits it deep to right center field and it is Casey Perkins who makes the catch and the ball game is over. Travis, after losing game one, three to nothing to the stubborn Seven Lakes Lady Spartans, comes back to win two to one in game two and in a runaway, 14 to four here today. Congratulations to Travis. And we will be right back to give you the totals on this one as the Travis fans celebrate. And we'll also give you another update on Ridgepoint. We'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County sports. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid or two kids or three kids, especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. 
And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Getagreatgig.com presents Gary Horn of Hornsolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to Getagreatgig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. What's your favorite high school sports memory? A late inning rally? A game winning shot? A photo finish? Maybe it's a pep rally or a pregame ritual. Maybe it's the euphoria of a late night bus ride home after a hard fought win. Maybe it's having pizza with teammates after the game. Now, imagine if it never happened at all. School sports need your help. With budgets getting tighter, it's more than the games that are on the line. It's all the traditions, the community pride, the culture of your hometown high school, plus all those memories that are on the line, too. What can you do? It's simple. Buy a ticket when you can. Go to a game. Take the whole family. Let's do everything we can to keep those cherished school sports memories alive. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know, take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. I have a question. Are you ready? Ready for anything? Ready for what life throws at you? At your kids? Are they ready to study? To research? To write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet? And what about you? Yeah, you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready to take opportunity? To make opportunity? To be on top of things. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. When you're connected, you're ready for anything. It's a simple question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready for anything. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes extra. Restrictions apply. Well, credit to the Seven Lake Spartans because they came into the series as the underdog. Their record was just 500. Their wins and losses were an equal number. But, actually, I may be off on that by a game. 
but they came into today's game with a record of 11 and 13 and yet they had pushed these Travis Tigers to the brink but the totals Travis with 14 runs on 15 hits one error today and they left seven runners on base for seven legs four runs on seven hits they committed one error and they left six runners on base. Rachel Ibarra, the winning pitcher, will give you the numbers on her. She pitches the complete game of six innings, throws 119 pitches, 64% strikes, seven hits allowed, four runs, all of them earned, struck out nine, wow. And she only walked two, and she did, did give up uh, that one home run on the day. And the losing pitcher, Amy Abke, she pitched so well both in games one and two, and. I think she just kind of reached her limit where all of a sudden Travis was able to kind of time everything. So big days for several hitters for these Travis Tigers. Wow, what an attack. Maddie Morris goes two for two, three with a double today. I can speak. Uh, <laughs> Maddie Morris goes two for three with a double today. Rachel Ibarra backs her great pitching performance with a two for three, three RBI afternoon. Lauren Garza, after homering to help win game two last night, goes two for, three, uh, two for three. Emily Camacho, two for three with a homer and a double, and she drove home two runs. And Ariel Kobaluski, two for five, two homers, six runs batted in on the day. And so great news, not just for Travis, but also for Ridgepoint. Ridgepoint beat Tompkins seven to five. So Travis was expected to win this one as the number one seed coming out of District 26A, and that's why I wanted to give so much credit to Seven Legs for battling so hard and pushing Travis. But Travis gets that win. On the other hand, you have Ridgepoint, which was the three seed in District 26A, taking on the favored Tompkins Falcons, and they got hammered in the first game of that series, 15 to five, and they come back today and win seven to five. So Ridgepoint and Travis both advance to the second round of the playoffs, and fortunately not against each other. Wouldn't it be fun if they did play each other at some point? You hear the Travis fans welcoming the girls as they come out of the dugout. They're gonna drive home happy, and everybody can watch the Kentucky Derby. So our final score today, Travis 14 and Seven Lakes 4. The Travis Tigers advance. So do the Ridgepoint Panthers by virtue of their win over the Tompkins Falcons. And VibeFortBend.com is going to sign off for a few days because there won't be any more competition because of UIL rules regarding star testing and wanting to make sure that the student athletes can properly focus on those assessments. Well, there's not going to be anything until Friday. And we'll have something then, either baseball or softball. Thank you so much for being with us. This has been a great day, and we got enough good weather to finish off this ball game. For everyone at Vipe, Roger Smith saying so long from Cy Woods, and thanks again to the Cy Woods folks for being such great hosts. 14-4, to 4, our final Travis wins it. Goodbye and God bless, and we will talk to you on Friday from somewhere. <laughs>